A lot of people don't realize how hard it is to get citizenship in this country. Super hard. There is a double standard between being like, coming out as an immigrant and coming out as someone who's a part of the LGBT community. Hi, I'm Mauricio. I'm Amalia. Nice, nice to meet to you. Amalia. Meet you. Yeah. Tell me about yourself, Amalia. Sure. Um, so, I am originally from Uzbekistan. I moved here when I was eight, and I first went to schools in DCPS and then moved to Maryland for high school and now college. Um, I'm a business major currently. Wow. What about you? I can already find some similarities, but yeah. um, I'm originally from El Salvador. Mm -hmm. I moved here when I was a month old. Oh, wow. um, okay. I have been in Maryland my whole life, mm -hmm. and I'm a communications major. Communications. Just recently changed. Yeah, I'm thinking about changing as well to psychology because I really want to go to a liberal arts school. Mm. Uh, they're better with scholarships, and then on top of that, they're like, I really enjoy the, I guess, the belief behind it where it's like a well-rounded individual yeah. it's not like one specialty yeah. but they don't have business so I'm thinking psych okay mm -hmm. that's, yeah that's still a great subject to kind of rebound off yeah how long have you been at MC for this is I actually just completed my first semester oh wow yeah. so I'm a veteran compared to you <laughs> yeah, that's, uh. but um, I did in my high school I did take some dual enrollment courses nice. but I don't think I would count that yeah, but I mean, that's still better, the better than APs, first of all. Yes, APs are just agree. A, such a waste of money. AP is, it's just, a, it's a waste of time. Yeah, I don't, I, I just agree. realized that. I took some, unfortunately, but then like now, if I had to go back, I would not do it. I would yeah. do dual enrollment. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been at MC, so this would technically be my, I think six semester, I'm not sure. So I was paying for my own education. So I was taking part-time classes. That was the only thing that I could afford. And then I had to take a gap year. And then when I came back, I got accepted into an honors program, the Macklin Business Institute. Yes, yes. So after that, I was able to take classes uh, full time. So mm -hmm. I'll be done in May. That's awesome. Yeah. And do you love your time here? Do you love Montgomery College? Yeah. So. It started out being like, come to campus, go home. Come to campus, go yeah. home, and that sucked. Like, there was nothing interesting about that. But then, once I started to get involved, after the gap year happened, actually, I had to go back to my country for some visa issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that sucked because I had to drop school, I had to drop all my classes. And when I was there, it made me realize like, wow, the opportunity that I have compared to my peers back in Uzbekistan, it's completely different. So when I came back, I was like, okay, you're gonna apply to this honor program, you're gonna get involved on campus, you're gonna get some things on your resume. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I honestly, I fell in love with MC because then it's like, it levels out the playing field. Like for kids that kind of came a little bit, you know, maybe they don't have the funding or maybe they just come from family, immigrants, whatever, it levels it out. And that, awesome. I'm so thankful for that. That's awesome. Yeah. Would you say that what you witnessed in your mm -hmm. country, is that kind of what motivated you? Definitely, yeah, because, so when I was there, my cousin just got married and my other one was getting married. Both of those girls, my older cousin, he got married to a girl when he was in his 30s and she was 19. So she was, I believe, like a year older than me at that point. So, and my, the other girl was in her early 20s too. So like right, very close, they're my peers really. And they're already getting married. And then in Uzbekistan, it's like you have a kid right after that, you know, within a year. And the fact that I wasn't feeling that same pressure, there weren't any like suitors coming to yeah. me. The fact that I could choose what I wanted to do, whereas they were just like, okay, this is the next step. I had more freedom. And I was, and it made me think like, if I just, if I don't take advantage of that, that's just stupid. Like I have this opportunity and I need to, 
take it. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you been back to El Salvador? No, actually, no. Um, ever since I moved here when uh -huh. I was um, a month old, I've just been around the Montgomery County area. Yeah. Um, it first started out in kind of like the Langley Park area mm -hmm. on the Montgomery County side. Yeah. But um, fortunately enough, I am a DACA recipient. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives me the leeway um, yeah. with here at school mm -hmm. and around the county. And I've kind of, with that legislation by my side, mm -hmm. I've kind of taken that and advocated for, my, for the immigrant community. That's awesome. um, I do work for an immigrant advocate organization mm -hmm. called United We Dream. So that we kind of awesome. we kind of work nationally and mm -hmm. that's kind of like what I do. That's that's amazing. That's one of the topics that I'm very passionate about because I went, I'm not even technically considered first generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of people don't realize how hard it is to get citizenship in this country. It's super hard. It's, I mean, when I talk to some friends and they're like, you've been here since you were eight. Why don't you just like apply, apply. as if it's so easy? Yeah. And I'm like, not the case. Yeah. And for me, I still, I'm an Uzbek citizen, but I've pretty much grown up here. Like head to toe and inside of this is kind of my home. This is my home. Mm -hmm. But then it's like my papers say differently. So if at any point, if I was forced to go back, I honestly don't know how I would deal with that because it's like, I'm not, I'm not used to it. That's not who I am. I don't have that same mentality. It would be a complete shock. Mm -hmm. So that's Yeah, that's do awesome. you think your status has influenced how you are in the classroom? Do you think your peers kind of treat you differently? Um, I don't think I'm treated differently because a lot of them might not even realize it. Oh, I see. Because I don't, you know, I don't have an accent. I don't, like, there's this assumption that immigrants are a certain way. Like, they, they shouldn't speak English or like this or they have an accent mm -hmm. or, and I don't fit that. A lot of people, when they meet me, I feel like they assume like, oh, she's American. That's just kind of the assumption. So there's nothing that it's treated differently. I think maybe my mentality might be different because I know it's not, it's not just a right, like it's not a, it's a privilege and I realize that yeah. to be here and in the classroom. Yeah. What about you? Um, well, actually I can agree with that, but mm -hmm. um, on a certain spectrum where yeah. um, I, I'm actually stereotyped for that mm -hmm. um, kind of immigrant who doesn't know how to speak English, who um, is all on the streets drug dealing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of that like variation of immigrant and yeah. I can see where you're coming from with that. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things that that kind of have highlighted my experience in college with my status mm -hmm. is I was originally supposed to go to a university. Mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to be an athlete, actually. Yeah. But because of my status and because of how it all works out, I just it just didn't work out for me. Yeah. So that's how my status has kind of affected my education. But you know, you just can't you just can't you know sit down and do nothing. So yeah. I kind of took that and. Um, expressed my emotions and went out and advocated for the community. No, that's amazing because it is hard and uh, I'm transferring and I am not eligible for FAFSA and I'm also not eligible for some scholarships depending on the school. That's why I'm going for private institutions because they, even though it's more expensive, they don't have like in-state, out-of-state. They just kind of, and they're more generous with scholarships. So it's like it is because when you're a citizen you don't consider these things necessarily yeah. like you're just like college is the next step like you know you don't consider when you're filling out the papers like oh what would it be if I was in a different situation yeah. so it's it's hard and it yeah. sucks to consider those things but then they kind of influence the character and I mean you found something that you love because yes. of that yeah. that's and awesome I kind of it's you can if, you, if we can find um, that common ground, don't you think like that's kind of like how we are taught in the education system, where it's like you have to fill out the FAFSA, you have to do all <laughs> this and that. But in our specific case, yeah. it's not. We don't get to file FAFSA, yeah. or we don't get to do um, what is need or what's necessary for us because yeah. the law prohibits that. Exactly. Um, yeah, and there's like once again, it's it's easy because you're. All of our opinions, everything in life, it is kind of based off of our experience. So I don't blame someone when they're like, oh, well, why don't you just do this? You know, because it's like, how would you know? Yes. But it's nice to also kind of inform people about that a little and say like, hey, it's not, not everybody does this. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's eligible for FAFSA, fun fact. And yeah. But 
I agree. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of, the ignorance is kind of what makes immigration such a highlight oh, of yeah. where we are and our political stance yeah. right now. So, yeah. There's, I actually just did a paper on this where it's like the emotion behind it as well. It's like from both sides of the spectrum, whether you're pro-immigration or against, you kind of use two ends of the spectrum. You know, if you're pro, you use the story of the, you know, genius kid that like made it to Harvard. Mm -hmm. And if you're against, you use like the worst of the worst examples. And it's like- That's just none politics of them, at its best. Exactly. And yeah. there's no, they're not like actual facts or statistics. Like you're not actually showing the benefits mm -hmm. of what immigration does. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what not. hurts the community. Exactly. Whether it is, the, it's, we are just not hearing what needs to be heard. Exactly. Um, you know, you don't, we don't always have to hear the good. That's true. It, but That's, I mean, yeah. if you overdo the bad, mm -hmm. you're kind of hurting the community as a whole. Yeah. Um, specific, or I won't say specific to my case, but um, mm -hmm. you know, people like us, we just want to come to this country and we just want to get a job. We just want to yeah. benefit this community. We just exactly. want to do something. Yeah. Um, but it sucks that I they agree. prohibit such um, actions because of a piece of paper. Exactly. One piece of paper. Exactly. I'm actually a part of the ACES program. No. So yeah. we, Long they've, time. I've been fortunate enough to, for them to have provided a scholarship for me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very vocal about mm -hmm. my immigration status and yeah. they kind of, Montgomery College and the ACES program kind of heard me on that. Yeah. So financial, financial issues mm -hmm. really is a, prominent the issue biggest, yeah. for um, immigrants. So yeah. they heard my cries and mm -hmm. they provided um, a scholarship for me. That's so, awesome. In my first semester of college. Yeah, so as I said to, um, after that trip I was like, I need to, I want to go to school and I want to dedicate myself like fully to school and improving myself and then having that reflect and ha then later on improving uh, on the community. And I was accepted into the Macklin Business Institute. Awesome. So that's also a scholarship right there. So with that, and those are just some of the ones, like I know there's more, there's the yeah. scholars, there's Montgomery the scholars. scholars, there's so many more scholarship opportunities that they didn't, they don't care, they're not as like, um, specific or with immigration status. And one of the other things was, I've had a lot of wonderful advisors who were just kind of motivating me to just be open about the story and not, because I think in this climate too, it's really easy to just not want to talk about it. Like you don't wanna seem different, you don't wanna have your friends think differently of you. I don't know if that makes yeah, sense, no, I but agree. like you just don't want to succumb to that. Uh, yeah, those lies. Yeah, exactly. And you and you're you're a little more reserved when talking about your like immigration status unless you're a citizen. And then with with that, one thing that I learned from advisors was them just saying, you know, share your story because that's what at the end of the day that's what makes you different. That's what made you who you are. So with that and. Honestly, I'm nervous about transferring because I feel like I have it so good here at MC. It's such a diverse group. I'm also part of the Student Senate awesome. and uh, the Student Business Association. So with that, like I'm involved around people who are similar to me and then even if they're different, they could learn from me and vice versa and it's very kind of accepting. Whereas I know with a lot of uh, four-year institutions, especially the private ones, it's kind of more or less the same type of people. And I'm nervous for that because mm -hmm. with here, it's such a diverse group and yeah. I, it's a really <laughs> accepting place here yeah. and I love it so much. Yeah. But that's really, I just love your story. That's yeah, so great to hear. Yeah, you too. No, that's awesome because you really did take something that is not the best and then you completely turned it around. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like with, with MC and other scholarships too, like not just in honors programs or any other programs, there's so many and I feel like that's, anybody can find something here. Yes. Anyone. And it's a matter of looking and sometimes it is harder, but just the acceptance and then financial help. I did say earlier, like MC really levels out the playing field for me. That's, I think, I forgot who I heard say that. Maybe it was Dr. Pollard. Uh, but with, with the things that I'm involved with, with, like I'm able to meet 
legislative representatives and I've spoken to them and I've shared my story and I don't think I would have had that chance at any other school mm -hmm. and I don't think I would have even made an effort if it was easier if college was more of like a the next step than a privilege. Mm -hmm. So what other things do you like to do on campus or just hobbies or interests? Well, after uh, my day is done mm -hmm. um, for the school day, I actually head over to Northwood, which mm -hmm. is where I graduated. Yeah. And I, I'm a volunteer coach for the team, both nice. for City and JV, because I was a cheerleader for the, cheerleader. the teams when I was in high school. Was, was that, you mentioned earlier that you were gonna uh, go to college as a yes. athlete, was that See, it? That's so cool. I was, um, I was supposed to be a D1 athlete for a cheerleader, nice. but it just didn't work out because of my status. Yeah, but so. still, that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, my mom was forced to do a lot of like sports and activities. So her motto when she had me was like, I'll let her figure herself out. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wish she would have pushed me a little bit so I could get involved in sports mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. That's so cool. What kind of sports would you have been interested in? Volleyball, most definitely. Oh. I love volleyball. Um, trying to think what else. I think that would be the main one. Like I would love to do volleyball. Yeah. Did yeah. you do any other sport? Cheerleading is awesome. It's hard. <laughs> so, apart from being um, a cheerleader, I'm a dancer, choreographer. Wow. Um, I've done kind of a bunch of productions mm -hmm. at my school. And my ninth grade year, I rarely say it, but I was a wrestler. So <laughs> I love it. I don't claim it, but <laughs> I mean, it was a part of me. You know, you just yeah. have to embrace who you are. You put it on your resume, yeah. regardless. Yeah, at the bottom, in like yeah. the far, littlest print. Yeah. No, that's so cool. Did you have to do like the? Um, heavy diet and then yes, binge yes. for wrestling. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, I fell in love with cheerleading, so yeah. that's kind of where my ninth grade to 10th grade mm -hmm. um, spectrum with sports went to. Yeah. Um, so we kind of cheered at games mm -hmm. and competed yeah. um, for the county and just recently w was allowed so to cool. move, move throughout the state. Yeah. But that's a big part of who I am mm -hmm. because it's an area where I feel most welcomed. Yeah. So, and for, as an immigrant, you just have to find that you that do. whatever that that makes yeah. you feel welcomed because, mm -hmm. like you like you said, this political stance, this yeah. where we are right now, it's just it's just they're just beating us. Yeah. So, what what made you want to go into cheerleading? Like, what's <laughs> <laughs> um. I actually growing up, my brother, I have an older brother, mm -hmm. he played for um, Einstein varsity football. Yeah. So I would go to all of his games and mm -hmm. I watched the cheerleaders because they were just so entertaining. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I watched the male cheerleader like, because I was like, I was so confused as to like, <laughs> wow, men can actually do this. Yeah. And coming here to Montgomery College, that same guy is actually currently on the team. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I don't have the time to thank him right now, but it's like, yeah. look where, look what you've shown me, that yeah. what kind of world that we actually are, can, mm -hmm. a cheerleader can be a man. If you don't mind me asking, how did you receive, like what kind of feedback did you receive when you wanted, when you told your friends, family about cheerleading? Like did you, because it is seen like as a uh -huh. feminine mm -hmm. sport, yeah. which sucks. Like once again, labeling again, but yeah. what was the, I just wanna So curious. I told my sisters first mm -hmm. and they were like, okay, like, um, like that's fine, you should. Mm -hmm. But it's really, it really came down to like my dad and we're like, he just laughed it off. He was like, haha, mm -hmm. like, are you really gonna do that? It's, yeah. To this day, he still doesn't, like, he's never gone to any of my games or competitions, yeah. but, you know, you just can't expect much from um, a foreign parent because yeah. you don't see that around it's often. True. But um, my brother is like the big, what he impacted mostly, because mm -hmm. he came in and he was like, no, let him do this because that's what he wants to do and you that's should awesome. let him. Look how far it can get him. It, it almost made me a D1 athlete. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, you just have to follow where your journey goes. Yeah. Would you think that when you transfer, uh, would you want to continue that? <laughs> I would the... love to, yeah. but then again, like I feel like emotionally, can I handle me not being able to go on to another team? Yeah. I'm considering um, 
Montgomery College's cheerleading team for next time. Yeah. But like I said, I was working for awesome. United We Dream, and that just took up a lot of my time. Yeah. No, that's awesome. But it's crazy how, and I've I've met several different people where they're from different countries, mm -hmm. but like the parents' mentality is all the same. Yeah. Where it's like very strict, yeah. and it's it's as if we legit have the same parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's even the different countries, yeah. different but cultures. It's. You know, I just, I couldn't give up on it. You know, you, yeah. you fall in love with something, you just have to pursue it. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. So apart from being an immigrant, I am actually gay. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a double standard between being like, coming out as an yeah. immigrant and coming out as someone who's a part of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. Because you face backlash not only in the LGBT community, yeah. but in the immigrant community, and mm -hmm. that, like, that's a lot of like suppression and oppression right. um, from society as a whole. So I just had to find that and just grasp it and find a, find a society or, or a community where I felt welcome. And that's why I joined dance. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I joined cheerleading. I was actually, like I accidentally checked something on my registration card mm -hmm. for um, my high school classes, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I'll just stay. In, I'll just stay in the dance class. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I fell in love with it. Yeah. It's just ironic how that happens. Serendipity. It's a serendipitous moment. <laughs> what what kind of backlash do immigrants that are also part of the LGBT community experience there? I'm interested in that. Well, just recently in the news. Um, mm -hmm. We've had um, a transgender who died in police custody. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of stuff like that where, um, well, as in backlash, like, apart from the immigrant backlash of like, well, you're just here to exhaust our resources and yeah. our jobs. It's like being being gay and being a part of the LGBT community. Yeah. It's like more of that, like more of a reason for you to be out of this country or be not be a part of this okay. um about be in America. Okay, so it's not necessarily within the LGBTQ community, no. it's more of like the, uh, okay, Outer, I see that, so, yeah, yeah, because then it's like one more thing that they could mm -hmm. kind of makes you different and mm -hmm. doesn't fit the mold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you say your family was very supportive of you coming out? Because I know, once again, family, traditional, it's Yeah, the foreign. It's hard, yeah. Yeah, well, it took some time. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, I knew who I was, yeah. so it's like I, it, if you didn't, if they didn't like me, I'm just like cool because yeah. because I mean I just got to keep on going. Yeah. You know, I I can provide. I love I still love you guys, but I mean if you don't love me, I'm still gonna <laughs> keep on going. Because yeah. like I've ever since um, coming out mm -hmm. between both um, worlds, I thought I just didn't have time to be vulnerable. Like in if you're vulnerable today, you just it's so easy just to just attack you. Yeah. So if you just put your guard up and just keep going, then you got it. Yeah. Right. Mauricio, thank you so much. I really learned a lot from you. And like, it was really interesting to see how much we have in common, but then also the different perspectives. Yes. It's really awesome. I really love this, and I really loved meeting you. Yeah, we should yeah. exchange numbers yeah, afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank well, you. Yeah, oh, good one. I'll just give yeah. you a thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you around. Yeah. Join yeah. Student Senate. I'm. I'm gonna actually go for that. Do it. I, I want to. I'll be your supporter. Okay. Yeah. You got me. Definitely. Okay.